Dear friends, welcome to the next topic of study in the ongoing course in journalism and mass communication. In the courses for the second semester, the area we take up now is still photography, an exciting field of mass communication. Photography today is the most popular medium that captures life as it goes by and lies all around us. Everyone feels like capturing the moments and visuals around us while traveling, visiting a new place, during important events and even tender moments. A picture shared with someone dear to you, living somewhere else or simply putting your favorite picture framed in your drawing room can give you a distinct identity. But for the print press, the challenge is much greater. Not only the picture has to speak a thousand words, it also has to convey that you are there at that very moment and also about aesthetically evocative composition and choosing technically sound exposure setting and shutter speed and one has to understand the magical interplay of light, shadow and color to create magic in a frame. Some basics of photography deal with lighting, that means how light plays important role in photography, knowledge of cameras and how they work, composition or key aspects of a good composed shot and techniques of taking pictures of still objects, moving objects and fast happening events. In a process of mass communication, visuals play as important a role as words. Much before language as we know it came into existence, visuals were used to convey information, sentiments, warnings and also to communicate information to posterity. While photography is of as recent an origin as late 18th century, ancient monuments and human settlements such as caves are repositories of visuals such as sketches, rock paintings and illustrations indicating that early humans understood well the importance of visuals. It can also be argued that the first words or text would possibly have been used to convey to describe a visual by one individual to the other as to what somebody had seen and wanted to convey it through words or text to someone else. In early stages of the print era, drawings were reproduced on engravings and soon enough newspapers and periodicals were trying to use illustrations to add value to the printed word and help readers obtain a more graphic depiction of events described therein. Thanks to the invention of photography, mankind acquired a new system that involved the precise recording of an image of reality intended as visual information. However, the evolution of technique was not very fast or quick. Suitable methods were long lacking for the printing of photos together with the text. At first, photographs were transferred in a rather complicated and tiresome manner onto an engraving. It was on March 4, 1880 that the first half-tone picture was reproduced in a New York newspaper, the Daily Graphic. It was indeed a historical milestone in the pictorial life of newspapers and periodicals. Although further use of photographs still took a relatively long time. Only in 1894 did the British newspaper Daily Mirror 
start using photographs exclusively as the basis for its illustrated supplements. During the 100 years from the time of the first half-tone reproduction, photo, photography as well as the various ways of using it in print press have undergone considerable changes and improved photographic techniques have made it possible to substantially cut down exposure time. Thus, the conditions for a more dynamic concept of reportage and reportage images were laid. No less significant had been the effect of the changes in society reflected in the rising interest among the broadest strata of people in topical events. We can no longer imagine the print media today discussing general information about present day happenings without photographs accompanying a story. <coughs> Many readers, in fact, look first for the printed photos which usually stand out between lines of text and only then after a cursory glance at them, do they begin to read the news items. In view of the importance and the strong impact of photographs, increasing attention is being paid to their characteristics for the print media. Specific demands which gradually arose because of editorial needs have influenced the activities of photographers working in newspapers and magazines to such a degree that today press photography is essentially an independent and separate field of activity. Therefore, for anyone wishing to begin active work in this field, an ordinary knowledge of photography is not enough. The need to have a photo of good technical quality is basic in social practice for all types of photography and neither newspaper nor magazines are exception to this rule. Although this level must be sometimes achieved under conditions which often do not apply in other branches of photography, the photographer journalist must also know how to obtain high quality results even in situations when he has to take a photo quickly, leaving him no time for calm and more thoughtful considerations. Of course, the primary feature of press photography starts from what is to be photographed and how this is to be done. What every editor and press photographer needs is an overall background knowledge enabling him to single out in current events what is more important, to know what he should call the reader's attention to and in order to express the right content in a proper way. The photographer must know how to adapt a message to the pictorial speed of photography. So we now start the issue of photography for the print press. As we understand now, the role of the press is to inform a broad circle of readers about current events or problems which in some way have become topical. In conformity with this, press photography must inevitably direct itself chiefly to photos supplementing the text, to providing pictorial information on a level with this text. So news photography delivers two core challenges to photojournalists. Number one, to capture the essence of a story in a single moment and number two, to resist any impulse to embellish or falsify an image to create greater impact or effect. Modern digital technology offers many tools and temptations, but the journalist's own eye and ethics are of 
foremost importance as we will study later. Photojournalism incidentally is a particular form of journalism which involves the collecting, editing and presenting of news material for publication or broadcast. This form of journalism creates images in order to tell a news story. It is now usually understood to refer only to still images because when video photography or video cinematography is done, it is not about photojournalism but about using the television cameras to capture live moments for further use. In some cases, the term could refer to video used in broadcast journalism and photojournalism is distinguished from other close branches of photography such as documentary photography, social documentary photography, street photography or celebrity photography by the qualities of timeliness that the images should have meaning in the context of a recently published record of events by the aspect of objectivity in that the situation implied by the images has to be a fair and accurate representation of the events they depict in both content and tone and by the aspect of narrative that is the images combined with other news elements to make facts relatable to the viewer or reader on a cultural level. So these three points enumerate how press photography is different from other kinds of photography. In other kinds of photography, embellishments are almost required as an essential part of the photo technique whereas in news photography, the photographs have to be raw so as to depict the reality as it happened. Like a writer, a photojournalist is a reporter, but he or she must often make decisions instantly and carry photographic equipment all the time, often while exposed to significant obstacles such as physical danger, weather, crowds or a hostile environment. According to the character and periodicity of the publication, Usually only one photo can be devoted to a particular event, which is basically what happens in a daily newspaper. Or there could be a whole pictorial story consisting of several mutually dependent pictures, which is a routine practice in many <coughs> illustrated magazines. In both instances, the pictorial communication supplements the verbal news by making it more graphic and thus enabling readers to form a more precise picture of an event. Photography has one very important feature in fulfilling this task that is it records reality with unsurpassed precision or as it is often said with documentary faithfulness. The term documentary evokes mixed reaction among press photographers who endeavor to be creative, but this prejudice may be unwarranted because the precision of photographic depiction has predestined photography to record documents and events important for social practice. So in defense of the documentary character of press photography, it should be said that faithfulness in depicting reality in no way rules out the creative element of the photographer. On the contrary, a truly good press photograph should always encompass more than a haphazard glance at the world and thus merely document the view unfolding or available in front. The personal aspect and interpretation of depicted reality is what gives the photo its desirable eloquence and moves the reader. The press photographer 
must therefore instinctively sense the correct judgment of individual scenes in the real world from the standpoint of a documentary communication. He should also be able to shape them so that they have an emotional impact on the readers and thus increase the effectiveness of the pictorial information. Fulfillment of this and similar conditions not only requires talent but also good foundations and experience in creating photographic work. Press photography transmits current information about events which most readers are unable to see with their own eyes. Electronic transmission of photos enables dailies to carry pictorial reports from great distances even where photographers if sent by the fastest flight could not be flown on time. So photography today often provides new insights into well known aspects of life from the perspective of the place from which the particular newspaper or publication is published. In daily life people may not have enough time to notice important things around them which nevertheless deserve attention. By singling out a picture of such episodes as they occur in time, the photographer can impel the reader to think about certain aspects of life. Once again, for this purpose, a photograph is much better because its immediate impact mobilizes interest more effectively than a text which can easily be skipped over once the headline is read. This co-participation in guiding the reader's attention is also an important role of photography in the print media. In this context, such instances are most significant when the picture provokes the viewer's imagination to the extent that he begins to think about the problem. Photographs for the press must be universally comprehended because a photo can fulfill its role effectively only if it is correctly understood. But it still must have another important feature to play its full role and that is to be reproduced in suitable size in the given publication. A large number of good photographs have been completely ineffective on the printed page because they were given too little space and the reader was therefore unable to ascertain in the first glance what they were about. A photographer must think about the ultimate effect of his work from preparing the photo to its final reproduction and presentation to the reader. In connection with the choice of photos, we must think of them from the point of view of their overall contribution to the design aspect in addition to their information possibilities. In newspapers where generally there is far more text than pictorial material, the photos also liven up the overall layout of the page by lending it a certain graphic interest. The creative value of the best photos also has a positive contribution to make to the visual culture of the audience in view of the mass readership of newspapers and magazines. In Sunday papers, for example, apart from the reportage documentary shots, one also finds photographs that suggest a mood and harmonize mainly to produce a creative effect, which means that their artistic concept once again is on par with the text that deliberately inclines towards softer material for a day. So the point to be discussed now is communicating through a photograph, which is very important for print still publications. Pictorial communication is not a monopoly of photography as we know from the entire history of painting. 
but only with the discovery of photography did society obtain a new imaging system which assisted the most unexpected evolution of pictorial communication. One of the main reasons was the simple technique and the short period of time needed to obtain a latent record in contrast to the efforts and time spent to create a painting or a drawing. A true picture of the real world which photography provides has all the requisites of being easily understood. Because of this, many theoreticians have claimed that photography is the new realism of our times. This became important especially recently when some modern paintings with their orientation towards abstraction were difficult for the masses to understand. The idea that the photographer wishes his photo to express usually comes from direct contact with reality. Very often a certain preparation is necessary which creates the conditions of a correct understanding of that reality. Only someone who has a deep knowledge about the nature of a subject can say something interesting through his photos. In some cases, the photographer goes so far that on the basis of preliminary study, he forms a clear idea about what he wants to express in his photos. On the basis of this, he begins to look for the particular view of reality enabling him to impart those ideas he had conceived earlier. This approach is not as simple as would seem. Very often it is necessary to seek a suitable arrangement of reality and its various changes before a photographer is satisfied that it will express his earlier formulated ideas. Very frequently it takes the form of a trial and error analysis. In studying the importance of a subject, it sometimes happens that more than one idea comes to the photographer's mind which he might be able to relate through his photos. And yet, all of them can be important traits of the observed reality. In such cases, the specific demands made for the reportage and assignment by the editor usually influence the final decision of the photographer. For instance, if a photographer is asked to turn out a pictorial story about how people today admire historical architecture or monuments or buildings, he orients himself chiefly to the expression of people looking at these cultural monuments or landmarks. The old buildings become more or less a backdrop against which life goes on and whose diversity will be given primary attention in shaping ideas that form the basis for the individual photos. On the contrary, a reportage on the beauties of architecture not restricted to any time will give emphasis mainly to an expressive presentation of typical elements of the historical architectural styles while the pictures of people will be, from the photographer's viewpoint, more in the nature of stand-ins. If a photographer decides on the idea he wishes to communicate, he has to consider in what way he can transmit this idea into pictorial language. Among the first things to decide is the size of the photograph. This is where the photographer can make good use of his creative imagination. <clears throat> Sometimes a close-up of a small detail is so eloquent that it tells the readers more <coughs> than a long article. In most reportages, the bigger the range of depicting reality, the bigger must be the photographer's experience so that he studies the whole subject and prevents any possible appearance of disturbing elements. 
it is much easier for a landscape photograph to fulfill this condition since one generally need not expect any fast moving elements as in the case of live reportage pictures in which the individuals are constantly changing positions the depiction of human beings on a photo is of key significance in grasping the idea of the entire statement as research has shown in using complicated equipment to study the movement of the eye watching photographs the viewer's attention is focused chiefly on human beings starting from this the viewer then tries to find the connection the human being or beings have with the other elements in the picture and then they wish to read and comprehend the full story naturally every expressively recorded human figure is automatically judged while watching the picture by the way the body is held the gestures and notably the facial expressions on the basis of his own life experiences the viewer tries to understand in all these signs the relation between the person depicted and the particular happening around him to give cogent expression to an idea it is important for a photo to have a certain contrast or tension this can be achieved not only by artistic choice but also by creating a confrontation as to the significance of the individual parts of a subject some important contrasts that are often used by press photographers are small versus big short and long narrow and wide slender and fat young and old near and far cold and hot beautiful and ugly rough and smooth shining versus dull and so on by using similar contrasts tension or a feeling can be introduced into a photo stimulating the viewer's imagination in registering the photograph's communication ability looking at or studying photographs depends not only on viewer's experience but also on some deep rooted habits it also must be remembered that the method of reading from left to right has a favorable influence on the impact of pictorial events moving in the same direction that is from left to right the next subject to be understood before we get on with the task of taking photographs relates to the issue of ethics in press photography the exact documentary faithfulness of a photograph convinces the reader that its model came from the real world this is the basis for the confidence that a photograph speaks the truth and it is therefore different from verbal communication which can easily be changed by an author either through stylization or even deliberately trust in the veracity of a photograph therefore becomes an important factor which ethically binds every honest photographer not to misuse the confidence the public has in him we know of many instances when the reputation of some public persons was sought to be tarnished by distorting photographs morphing or by using photo editing software with malicious intent the whole problem can become more complicated by the fact that even after the most detailed analysis of the picture one finds no trace of falsification either by mode either by montage or by retouching distorting the truth by an incorrect choice can assume various forms for instance even in the loveliest of towns one can undoubtedly find some ugly spots 
just as one can always find in a crowd of people who are rejoicing at some event a person who either looks sad or miserable certainly it does not take any great skill to use such exceptions to try to fool the public but setting down a typical views of reality is not the only ethical problem in press photography public interest in popular actors actresses artists political figures etc leads to a demand for photos about their private lives although today most well known personalities are aware of the invaluable help of published photograph in promoting their careers and establishing their celebrity status they often regard the favors of the omnipresent reporters and photographers as an inconvenience from which one would do better to hide or run away the management of some publications however is aware that the sale of the magazines or the publication newspapers depends upon the originality of their content besides being interested in details about the lives of celebrities readers are on the lookout for any kind of sensation every press photographer must realize that there are limits set by unwritten laws of decency good taste and human sympathy with the pain and sorrow of others many photos taken without such thought have even found their way to publication and become the subject matter of debate or controversy their defenders start from the premise that they have a right to record everything to be found in life or in public domain without the photographer intervening in any way to let things happen experts also claim that it is not the photographer's fault if present day reality provides such cruel scenes which the camera objectively captures rather they'll say it is the shortcoming of the society which does not create conditions to curtail such things and such visuals the question is far from simple some photographers who shortly after the second world war and also the vietnam war saw the most horrible scenes and they had the full right to record everything that had so shaken them on the assumption that they wanted their work to warn mankind against a repetition of such cruelties in the future on the other hand naturalistic shots of crippled people who enviously study the beautifully dressed windows of fashionable shops will say more about the photographer's ambition to achieve fame through an unusually angled picture a classic example often given about the conflict between the professional and ethical demands of photography or of journalism itself is that what should a journalist or photographer do when faced with a man who is about to commit suicide should the photographer stop the miserable person from going ahead and thus saving his life or watch from the sidelines the man take his own life so that a picture of a lifetime could be taken variations to this classic conflict exist in real life even today a recent example being a case when a protester having threatened to commit self immolation was egged on by some photographers and reporters and even taunted so much so that the poor man was forced to light a match to set himself on fire after he doused himself with kerosene undoubtedly the photographs taken at that point of time were graphic in nature but a man died needlessly for those pictures to be taken 
the debate continues all over the world in the community of journalists and press photographers with the internet having added a new dimension to it. Apart from one's own formulation of communication, certain ethical problems arise from creative problems. Among the special features of photography is that besides its easily mastered technique, any average photographer can recognize almost at first glance how a masterful picture was made. It then is not very difficult to create a similar variation. This approach is quite problematic from the ethical viewpoint because what it means basically is stealing a creative work from another author. This whole issue is complicated still further by the fact that frequently several authors turn out very similar photos independently of one another and it would be extremely difficult to try and prove as to who really was the first. Because of this, most such variations are not the subject of legal disputes. The honest press photographer, however, must have a sensitive conscience so that despite the inability of the law to punish him, he will not allow himself to deliberately copy the work of other colleagues without making his own contribution. The true greatness of every honest work, including photography, is usually evident after a certain lapse of time. Any desire for quick sensation leads to results whose value and success are generally quite tenuous. When you take the time element away, the value of a photograph is fully revealed mainly in what the author has honestly put into it. Therefore, one of the basic pillars of the ethical foundations of photography is honesty, manifested not just in the principled rejection of deliberately copying photographs by others, but also in that an author photographs according to his own convictions and this applies to the choice of ideas the photo is intended to convey. Again. The advent of the internet has added new dimensions to the whole issue of originality, <coughs> plagiarism and intellectual property rights. Several photographs published in newspapers or journals become public property after the publication is circulated. Once such photographs are in public domain and reach the internet, then the stuff is free for everyone to use it as and when it pleases without the obligation of even giving credit for it. Photographers keep struggling with means to combat this problem and digital cameras and digital photography have made things much more difficult. Now we move to the subject of content and form in press photography. In press photography, content and form of photograph is of utmost significance since the expressiveness of what a photo wants to say is increased by a suitable composition. What is meant by this is an arrangement whereby the individual pictorial elements are incorporated into a photograph in a certain order which facilitates the immediate perception of the content and at the same time enhances the impact of the entire work on the viewer's emotions. In press photography, the form of the picture is based mainly on a synthesis of linear and light composition. The linear composition is chiefly the geometric position of the picture and the mutual relationship between the individual pictorial elements in it. The very essence of photography is directly dependent 
on the question of the treatment of light and shade, especially to give an illusion of depth. A photograph is composed in main outlines while observing reality through a viewfinder during which changes in distance and position or even a different choice of angle at which the camera is held gradually form the arrangement felt to be the most suitable for that particular picture. Most experienced photographers compose impulsively without any theoretical evaluation of the composition being guided by their instinct for an effective form. During a subsequent analysis of their photos, one can generally find justification for the composition by referring to a certain rule or even the interplay of several rules. However, a beginner gradually improves his perspective faculties in compositional studies, enabling him to obtain the necessary experience and sensitivity for an arrangement that makes an active impact. This is especially important for anyone who wishes to become a professional press photographer. A photojournalist must react to the course of events very quickly and so it is essential that together with what he wants his photos to contain, he must quite subconsciously compose the picture. Usually, the first step in composition is adapting the subject to the intended shape of the picture. In the era when photographs were taken on the film reel or the roll of negatives, this depended to a great extent upon the format of the negative. Miniature film of 35 mm is usually of a rectangular shape. A rectangle as the final shape of an enlargement can be oriented either to height or to width. The choice between the two must be decided at the outset while composing the photo because the entire arrangement must then be adapted to this size. As a rule, the very choice of subject determines its particular size that is whether the photo will look better by height or by width. One should also not overlook the purpose of the photo. For instance, if a photographer consciously prepares a shot for a magazine cover, he will choose the height option that is the photo being vertical in nature in view of the shape of the publication. On the contrary, if the photographer has in mind a picture going in the upper half of a broadsheet newspaper, then he will undoubtedly choose the width arrangement that is the photograph being horizontal in nature. Another important decision in composition depends on the deployment of the most important pictorial elements on the photo. All areas are not equally suitable from the standpoint of perceiving the picture and therefore the proper choice of place makes it possible to emphasize certain parts of the subject. Some rules about dividing the space of a photograph are based on geometry, especially the rule of the so-called golden section. This rule of golden section means a point on a fixed horizontal line from which the shorter section of the line has the same relationship to the longer section as the longer section has to the whole line. If you divide one side of a photo in this way, the point you obtain is an imaginary perpendicular line. All the elements situated on this line are close to it draw maximum attention of the viewer. Apart from the actual composition of the photograph, the golden section rule can also be applied to good effect. 
in placing the photo on the pages of a magazine or newspaper in relation to the overall graphic layout. As a rule, every photo has a number of expressive elements which by drawing the viewer's attention almost compel him to seek a certain interconnection between them. This mutual interconnection usually stands out more if the center of interest is in harmony with the principles of linear composition. Thus, the stress on perpendicular direction calls attention to the height of important parts of the subject matter. The composition can be brought out even more by an atypically narrow rectangular form which of course is oriented to height. A vertical composition for instance is very good for underlining dignity and importance linked to a degree with a certain experience acquired in perceiving the world. For instance, a tall and slim person who holds his body straight usually has a more heroic aspect than someone who is bent over. Of course, such a composition can attain its effect only if it conforms to the content of the photo. A composition based on a decidedly horizontal line induces an atmosphere of calm and tranquility. Most likely, this effect is subconsciously linked to recollections of comfort of a person who enjoys lying down. But the horizontal line can often be used to achieve the opposite effect, that is, the dynamic depiction of swift movement from left to right, once again related to memories of fast moving vehicles. Thus, with vertical and horizontal compositions, one must be sure that such symmetry does not occur that cuts the picture in two halves. A photo composition stressing a diagonal line generates excitement in the good sense of the word. This is linked to the fact that a diagonal line is the longest direct line that can be drawn on the surface of a photo. If two or more imaginary lines with a diagonal or oblique or slanting orientation meet on a photo, the reader's attention is usually drawn to the intersection. In a photograph in which several expressive pictorial elements are isolated from one another, the viewer's eye usually seeks some connection between them just as it does watching the constellation of stars in the sky. The simplest link up which can arise in this instance is a triangle. From the geometrical viewpoint one can regard the triangle as the least complicated surface and therefore everything that brings a triangle to mind has an articulate and comprehensible effect. From the formal standpoint, quite often a very interesting effect is produced on a photo by repetition of a given element which the eye immediately registers. In certain instances this might be geometric like wheels or bicycles or cars standing in a row one after the other. In other photographs, an element of the content whose shape the reader comprehends rationally is also registered immediately by the eyes of the reader. The, the repetition of a shape usually gives rise to a certain rhythm which is what attracts attention. Apart from the compositional relationship among the main elements of a photo, the photographer must also devote attention to the arrangement of the background. This is often more important than it might seem. Many good ideas and pictures have come to a knot because the background introduced chaos into the picture 
and thus ruined it completely. This problem especially relates to press photography where the dynamics of life are studied routinely. It often happens when taking pictures that at the last moment the background is ruined by a sudden regrouping or movement of the mobile elements in the frame that has been selected for composition. These rules of composition are by no means hard and fast but more in the nature of framework for anyone who wants to acquire experience. Mastery of composition is essentially analogous to mastering the fundamentals of stylization. Composition represents an outstanding component of every good photograph, but exaggerating it would be as unwise as stating that content is the main thing in a photo without taking composition into account. With this introductory information about press photography, now we will have a quick look at some important dates in the evolution of photography as we know it today. <coughs> so the timeline of photography includes some dates in history <coughs> as the technique grew. In ancient times, camera obscuras were used to form images on walls in darkened rooms and the image formation was via a pinhole in a box through which an inverse image was seen on the walls of a darkened room. In the 16th century, brightness and clarity of the camera obscuras improved by enlarging the hole and inserting a telescopic lens into it. In the 17th century, camera obscuras were in frequent use by artists and made portable in the form of sedan chairs where people sat and photographs were taken. In 1727, Professor J. Schulz mixed chalk nitric acid and silver in a flask and he noticed darkening on the side of the flask when exposed to sunlight. This was the accidental creation of the first photosensitive compound. In 1816, Nicephor Niepce combined the camera obscura with photosensitive paper and in 1826, Niepce created a permanent image. In 1834, Henry Fox Talbot created permanent negative images using proper paper soaked in silver chloride and fixed with a salt solution. Talbot created positive images by contact printing onto another sheet of paper. In 1837, Louis Daguerre created images on silver plated copper coated with silver iodide and developed with warmed mercury. Thus the practice of developing a photograph evolved. 1855 saw the beginning of the stereoscopic era and the use of multiple lenses and in 1855 to 1857 direct positive images on glass known as ambrotypes and metal that is tin types or ferrotypes had become popular in the US. In 1861, a Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell demonstrated a color photography system involving three black and white photographs each taken through a red green or blue filter. So this was the beginning of the color separation method that led to evolution of color photography in due course of time. In 1871, Richard Leach Maddox, an English doctor, proposes, proposed the use of an emulsion of gelatin and silver bromide 
on a glass plate. This was the development of the dry plate process. In 1878, dry plates were manufactured commercially and were used on a large scale by photographers all over the East Western Europe and US. In 1880, George Eastman, a 24-year-old ambitious young man, set up the Eastman Dry Plate Company in New York. And the first half-tone photograph appeared in a daily newspaper of New York, that is the New York Graphic. In 1888, the first Kodak camera made by George Eastman containing a 20-foot roll of paper enough for 100 two and a half inch diameter circular pictures was manufactured and in 1889 improved Kodak cameras with a roll of film instead of paper was put into the market. In 1906 availability of panchromatic black and white film and therefore high quality color separation color photography came into being. By 1907 first commercial film that is the autochrome plates were manufactured by the Lumiere brothers in France. In 1975 Steve Sachin at Kodak built the first working CCD or the charged couple device based digital still camera and by 2004 the Kodak company stopped the production of film cameras as the digital cameras had completely overtaken the field of photography. As we notice, after the manufacturing of digital cameras became commonplace, their price came down drastically and manufacturers also started coming out with newer models many times a year. Among the top digital camera manufacturers today in the world are Sony, Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Kodak, Samsung, Fuji, Toshiba, Pentax, Panasonic, Konica Minolta, Ricoh and Leica. It is debatable to say which camera is the best or most preferred by professional photographers but the experience of use differs on several parameters like user friendliness, maintenance, processing, aim and shoot convenience and of course price. Beginners must get relevant feedback from experienced press photographers before making up their minds. Here it also must be remembered that photography is still best learnt while using one's own intuition and judgment. The digital cameras do it for you whereas in the old fashioned film cameras one had to be very careful and cautious as to selecting the right moment, the right composition and the right technique for taking a picture. In modern day digital cameras the cameras themselves look out for the right kind of time, light, background, color and everything so that the element of human technique is kept to a minimum and most of the digital cameras are of the aim and shoot variety. When we are talking about press photography, especially still photography, it must be remembered that today a photographer has the option to take dozens of photographs of one event and from those dozens of photographs the best one can be chosen while sitting at either the place of event itself or back in the office because the time taken for processing is completely not needed. In the, in the previous film camera uh, era the photographers had to be more careful about taking the films because the film reels were not only expensive but they took some time to be developed 
and enlarged and then given on for printing. So as far as technique is concerned, the photographers today have much more convenience at their hands, but they have to be very, very careful that the cameras do not take the initiative of the human intelligence from them. With this, we end the discussion on introduction to still photography with a special focus on press photography and still photography. This discussion will continue with more information on how to take photographs of news events and other techniques related to this aspect of media and mass communication. Till then, have a great time and thank you.